be able to move as much as we well, like you could. Well, AJ Tyson. You ready, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, we're about to start our first press conference with the Michigan State student athletes. As a courtesy to your fellow media members and team participants, please silence your cell phones. Uh, we have handheld mics. Emmy has a handheld mic. When you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get the mic to you. Let us know who you are and who you're with. Uh, we also be will be joined by Zoom. For those of you on Zoom, please raise your hand, um, and we'll uh, address you. The and when we take care of everybody in the room first. And a reminder, everybody, that recording these press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. With that, who has the first question? Okay. Graham Couch, Lansing State Journal. I'm wondering what you guys have learned about Mississippi State in the, the days since we last talked to you and, and sort of the, the scouting report that you can give to everyone without giving away too much. We'll go from right to left. Tyson. Um, I would just say, you know, they're big, physical, athletic. Uh, so just got to keep to our principles, you know, defending and rebounding. Uh, and they got some players who can, who can go off. So just got to do what we can do to con contain them. AJ. Uh, pretty much similar. You know, they're relentless on the glass. Um, Relentless with their effort. Um, they have a lot of athletes, um, especially in that uh, SEC conference, um, like to get up and down. And they have, like he said, they have people that can go off that we have to contain. Malik? Um, same thing. Tall, long, athletic. Uh, they rebound well. Um, and we just got to do a good job of making sure that we, we handle the rebounding portion. Um, and that's it, really. Aaron Beard with the AP. This is for anybody that wants to answer. The Kempom numbers for you guys defensively are really good for field goal percentage efficiency. But the last few games maybe haven't been exactly what you want. I think teams are shooting closer to 45% in the last five games. What have you done maybe best in your estimation defensively this year? And what do you maybe need to get back to in this tournament? Malik. I'll answer this one. Yeah. Um, I mean, just sticking to our principles, really. Um, we've played a lot of different varying teams of varying styles of play um, over the year. So just getting back to our principles of Michigan State defense, uh, making sure that we're in our gaps, making sure that we're helping, uh, making sure that we're doing different things off the double or things like that, you know, just making sure that we're doing what we do best. Um, and I think that's what's most important for going into this tournament. AJ? Uh, just kind of getting back to who we are, you know. Um, we kind of been not as engaged on that side of the ball, I would say. Um, letting some lapses um, get us in, in spurts or letting teams go and run in spurts, which is hurting us and hurting our defensive percentage. But I think we just kind of got to get back to doing what we were doing before, and uh, we'll be fine. Tyson. Uh, I would just say, you know, letting our, our defense uh, start us off, uh, you know, instead of letting the offense dictate everything, dictate the game with our defense, and we should be fine. Every one of you guys have been to the tournament every season you've been there. The advantages of having been there done that? Um, I mean, the advantage is just the experience, really. Um, you, you understand, like, what it's like. You understand the difference in every possession in this tournament. Um, you understand uh, the difference in emotion and um, kind of the, the emotion not only of your team but of the crowd and just everything that's going on around you. Um, and I think that's that's probably the biggest biggest thing that stands out to me. Definitely the experience, um, understanding what it takes to win uh, at least a game uh, in itself, and just know what it takes to prepare for these type of games. Um, playing teams that you haven't seen before, um, only seen a couple of days after they called your name, and you and you knew who you were matched up against. So just the experience you have going in and um, being prepared, and knowing what it takes to prepare to come out here and handle business. Uh, really, just like uh, nothing's given. Uh, no, no lead is safe. You know, you got to still play every possession. Uh, you got to finish the game. You got to play the whole 40 minutes. Other questions? Right here. 
Oh, Kelly Blackburn with the Niner Times. Um, how do you guys expect to slow down Josh Hubbard, who's playing really efficient ball right now? Uh, make all his shots tough. Um, he makes tough shots. Um, so just continue to make them tougher. Uh, you're not going to hold anyone scoreless, but if you can, it's always a plus. Make it, make it, make every shot he takes tough for him. You know, don't give him nothing easy, no clean looks. Um, close out space and don't give him too much space because all he needs is a little bit to get a shot off. Um, I say I think it'll also help just help defense. Um, our defensive style is a lot different than most of the teams in the SEC, so I think it'll be a little bit of a different look for him. Yeah, and if you would address your question to a specific student athlete, that would help us up here. Who has the next question? To our right. Malik, uh, Tom Izzo keeps talking about whether you guys can make the patented Michigan State run. When, when he says that, what, what does that mean to you? Do you think he's talking about like sort of what you did a little bit last year? Is he talking about other years of, um, you know, where you guys were lower seeds? What, what's your sense of what he's talking about and how much has he talked about that with you guys? Um, I mean, he, he always talks about a run, going on a run, uh, whether it's in the tournament, whether it's in regular season. Um, and I think he just means putting solid games together. Um, for me, I mean, I try not to try not to look too far ahead. For me, it's every game, one game at a time, just because that's how a run starts. So, um, I mean, he, he's talked about it a little bit, but I wouldn't say it's something that like we continually stress on every day. Middle of the room. Uh, David Hale with ESPN. Uh, uh, kind of to piggyback off of that, there has been so many examples, even when Michigan State is not necessarily a, a you know a one or a two seed, in which those runs have happened in this tournament. Is there something unique about the way that Coach Izzo prepares you for this environment that has made th this program in particular so sort of uniquely successful at, at having these runs? And I don't know if any of you have a, a strong opinion on that. You can answer. Uh, I answer. Um, I think. Just our non-conference and, and the games that we play um, leading up to our conference, um, which is one of the top conferences in, in, in college. But just the way we structure our schedule and um, play different styles of basketball throughout the year and then get into conference play, uh, we're always battle tested when it comes around this time of year. So we're kind of ready for any style of basketball that needs to be played to, to win a game. And we have a great staff that prepares us every night. So I feel like we always are prepared to play. As long as we go out there for 40 minutes and handle our job, it's always an opportunity. Other questions in the room? We'll also take questions from Zoom if anyone has a question. Raise your hand on Zoom. Any other questions or student athletes before we let them go? All right, guys, thank you. General comment. Well, general comments, I'm excited to be here. You know, it's uh, when you go 26 times in a row, which is pretty neat, and one of your first was here, um, makes it even neater. But I think the best thing was uh, to actually be in a room, not sure what was going on, not sure what was going to happen, and to see players and families and managers and even me uh, kind of excited that we got in. Um, not that in ways I didn't think we deserved to get in, but I understood where we were, and it's kind of been, you know, well, we're in, where are we going? And this year, it kind of made me appreciate a little bit what, what has gone on in the last 26 years, and that was probably good for me. So I wouldn't want that to happen that often, but it, it, it was exciting for uh, that night. First question, second row to our right. Tom, you talk about your, the patented run, right? Is it something you brought up a little bit? I'm wondering what that looks like to you, and like, are there characteristics of teams that have made it that need to happen for those games to be put together? Well, I think you know a lot of times to make a, a run, you have to have good guard play, and ours has been. I think we have guards good enough to make that, and it, yet our guards have been a little inconsistent. I think you've got to have experience. Uh, to make one of those runs. And uh, we do have experience both as players and coaches. And, uh, and I think you've got, had to gone through hell a little bit. You know, even our championship year, you know, we beat teams in overtime. We beat teams by one or two. We lost to Wright State. I mean, you know, I think if you, if you don't go through something, 
that's painful. The rest is never the same. And uh, so we've done all those things. And yet uh, uh, I am optimistic because we played so many of these top teams and maybe haven't won enough of them. But right there, you know, Arizona, right. You know, we played Duke, we played Baylor, you know, we even played Tennessee in that exhibition, but it was a full game. And, uh, and then, of course, Purdue and twice and Illinois twice. I mean, those are a lot of one, two, and three seeds. And uh, we've been right there in every one of them. And uh, so I think that brings uh, some optimism to my pessimistic way of living. With WCBI in Mississippi, what have you seen in the tape from Josh Hubbard, and what's going to go into limiting him offensively? You know, we have a kid named Young who's at uh, Maryland that plays similar, but he doesn't take the shots that this kid takes and and makes. Unfortunately, um, a phenomenal story, you know, when you look at it. And uh, he's a guy that can score it in a lot of different ways. He gets fouled a lot. Um, has incredible elevation on his jump shot. So um, kind of take a, we brought a fishnet along, see if we can guard him with a fishnet, you know. And uh, But um, we've played some good guards. We have pretty good defensive guards. Uh, we're going to be tested, though. There's no question with him outside, Smith inside, uh, That that's a pretty good combo. Second row. Kelly Blackburn from the Niner Times. Um, what makes this team unique as the school is making its 26th straight appearance in this tournament? Well, if I, if I said what makes it unique of most of the 26 teams, it'd be we've been a little more inconsistent. What makes it unique, though, in the other way is, you know, we've had a 12 and a 13 point loss, but there's no 30 point losses or 20 point losses. We've had a few of them back in the day. and. Um, We've probably had six or seven games that have been one or two points with two, three minutes left. Some we led, some we didn't. Um, and that's what keeps me hoping that if we could ever get it all together, and you say, well, why haven't you? And it's been, there's been a few reasons. You know, I think Walker getting injured a little bit around the Minnesota game hurt us a little bit. And, and I think we're getting a little more out of Jackson Kohler, which would help us inside. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's unique. We're not as good a rebounding team, but we're uh, at times like last week. We had 18 to 0 fast break. We can be a good running team. So uh, I don't know. That's a good question that I really haven't thought about a lot. Red Isle. Hey, Tom, Ben Portnoy, Sports Business Journal. Just uh, looking at the tournament right now, there's a lot of discussion about potential expansion and, and looking at sort of the format. I guess, where do you kind of fall on, on what you think could change with the tournament? Do you feel like it needs to be expanded at all? And, and what do you see as kind of the future of, of the tournament going forward? Well, four days ago, Saturday night, when I was sitting there and I saw some things on the, on the uh, tube, I was hoping they expand it to 100, you know? Uh, but I, I do think it's a delicate issue. I really do. I, I, I feel for some teams that didn't get in, um, you know, when you have those automatic bids. I, I'm not sure I'm, I understand why, but the conference tournament things, uh, you know, you can go and like Purdue go 17 and three and dominate the conference and then lose. And it's okay if it's a second place team, but I think that makes it hard, you know, and why some teams will get left out. So um, I don't know if something could be fixed there but uh, then the conference tournament wouldn't be as, you know, it's all about what is best for the financial part of it, if we were to be very blunt and honest with you, more than it is the player teams. And as a guy that's been on a lot of boards and everything, um, I really haven't sat down and thought what I'd like to see, but uh, there is getting to be more parity. There's getting to be more unknowns. There's getting to be more upsets. There's getting to be more of these, you know, 20 of the 32 conferences, the regular season champ did not, that just doesn't happen like that. So um, I think it needs to be taken a serious look at. Um, thank God I'm not uh, the czar, so I don't have to take criticism for how I feel and I'll think about it after the tournament. Middle of the, middle of the room to our right. Aaron Beard with the AP. Um, 
you guys have a you, Ken Palm loves your defensive metrics in terms of defensive efficiency. You talked about having good defensive guards, but the last five games, I think you're allowing 45 percent shooting, 38 from three. What what is what does this team do best defensively, and maybe what you need to get back to that things haven't been the last few games the way you want? Well, you know, I got ripped early in the year because I I'm not as big on analytics in some ways, you know, because um, analytics never measure injuries, they never measure, you know, somebody lost their grandmother, you know. There's so many things. Uh, what I like is the heart and the body language look. You know, that's the metrics I use. Uh, what is your heart and what is your body language? Lately, we haven't defended quite as well, and part of the reason is we've played Edie, I think, two times in that last, and uh, he happens to score a lot of points when he's close to the basket. Um, but we've, uh, you know, we've had our stretches where consistency in general has been a problem. Now, at the same time, you know, against Illinois and against Purdue, we've rebounded the ball a lot better than we were doing earlier in the year. So I, I think what we have been, though, is more consistent defensively than offensively. And and that means that uh, we don't get out of sorts a lot. We're, we're not doing a lot of tricky things. We're just kind of staying to the basics. And it's worked pretty well for us so far. Third row to our left. Hey, Tom, Ian Crest, CBS Lansing. We just had a chance to talk with Jeremy in the locker room, and he seemed to be in very good spirits. I'm just curious, what has impressed you the most about the way he has handled the last couple of months that obviously did not go as expected? Well, Jeremy Fears is one reason when you're picked high and then, you know, things don't go as well. I mean, to be very blunt, Jeremy Fears was an important part. He was maybe the most ready of all the freshmen, both mentally and physically. And, you know, was playing 15 minutes a game and then unfortunately the injury and um, he's been the most positive guy. He's been really good for me because he's he's just works every day. He's rehabbed every day. Um, he's going to get to go through layups and everything, which is a miracle for what he's been through. And uh, I'm uh, I'm excited for him in the future. You know, I, I guess. He brings a positive attitude like no other and uh, the will to succeed like like my old point guard, Mateen Cleaves. He has the same kind of mentality. Front row right. Morning, Tom. Uh, Jeff Lesson, WWJ in Detroit. Based on preseason expectations for your team, not just media and fans, but your own expectations, how deep a run in this tournament would you have to go to call it a successful season? Probably winning tonight or tomorrow. You know, I, I mean, listen, um, I've made no bones about that either. I've been pretty honest about how I feel about, you know, have we underachieved? I think so, you know, and I think a lot of that falls on me. And yet, um, when I say that, um, you know, those couple of injuries early hurt us, uh, you know, Kohler and, and Fears. And, so I try to be realistic with that. Uh, a couple of those tough losses. I mean, who'd ever think you'd go one for 20 and 23 for 38 from the free throw line and lose a game in overtime, you know, at home? I mean, we've lost a couple games for free throw shooting. We were one of the best free throw shooting teams in the nation last year. So things happen. And uh, but the way this tournament is, the way this season has gone for everybody. And I said everybody. I mean, I, I, Kelvin Sampson, I took over his job at Michigan State. He was the GA when I came, and, and uh, I love him, love, the, love his team. And for them to get beat by 20 or 30, uh, you know, it's just that kind of sums up the season. Kansas losing, but that sums up the season. So I was appreciative of getting in. I think we earned it because of the schedule we played in that, but I was also appreciative, and if we wouldn't have, I would have been able to walk away and say that's on us. But um, every game you win in this tournament, like I said, I've been a one seed and been two seed, been beaten by a 15. I've been a uh, you know a very high seed and been beaten early. I've been a low seed and gone to a Final Four. So I'm just taking it one game at a time. As the I'm actually not. I'm taking it one weekend as a time because that's where our program's at. But you have to win the first game to play the second one. And um, how deep? I don't know. I'll tell you after uh, tomorrow night. How's that? I'll give you a better answer. Back row aisle. 
Hey, uh, Tom, David Hale with ESPN. Uh, you, you mentioned a little earlier but that you're not the biggest fan of analytics. I saw Rick Pitino had suggested that the, uh, the committee for the tournament might benefit from having some guys like Roy Williams, Coach K, Jim Beheim, that, that sort of see the, the, the things beyond it. Do you think the analytics have become too much a part of the conversation and w would not necessarily those voices, but some voices that are more sort of ingrained in the day in and day out and know the, the, the struggles that you all go through be a better voice to have on that committee? Listen, I, no insult to anybody on the committee, um, but, uh, you know, you look at the football committees more, you know, they got former players sometimes, they have former, co I mean, when you look at a, I, I think Rick, maybe because we're both Italian, I, I agree. Uh, that there should be something to that. You got Jim Beheim, you got Jay Wright, you got Roy and and uh, and Mike. I mean, uh, you know, o over the years you've had Gene Cady's of the world and Clem Haskins. I mean, guys that I think really love the game. We're on all the committees. We're a part of everything. I think uh, there definitely should be some coach players on that thing uh, to bring some levity to as crazy as it's gotten. And yet, uh, you know, I never know what what the net means, what Ken Palm means, what ESPN means, or Iron Mountain Daily News. You know, I, I, there, there's so many things out there right now that I think do influence. Um, I've had an AD that was on that committee. I know what he did. If everybody did what he did, I'd feel comfortable. I mean, he spent more time on that than he did being an AD, because that's what it takes. And that's why I think um, what Rick said would be a good idea either way. And like I said, I'm appreciative of being in, and I wouldn't have felt any different if I was out. I just think it would be best that people that have been in the game, that been around so you know when you lose a game because something happened or what happens when you play three tough games in a row and all that stuff. Analytics don't show those injuries or, you know, they show when a guy gets hurt, if he misses a game, but what if he plays hurt? What if he misses five games? You know, analytics don't show that. And uh, I think you need some of those kind of people on it. I think that would be a great suggestion. Right aisle. Joe Rexler from The Athletic. Hey, Tom. What's uh, up, Joe? I wanted to follow up on the NCAA tournament. Um, SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey has hinted recently pretty strongly about the idea of maybe more opportunities for power league teams, possibly at the expense of the one big leagues. What do you think about that, and I guess in general, just about football's potential impact on this tournament? Well, I'm a Division II guy, you know. Um, so I'm always looking for the little guys. I'm not very big myself, so I, I always have an appreciation. And maybe that would be a reason to expand. I just think what's happening now, um, everybody likes the upsets in the first weekend, but I'm not sure moving on, that's what's best for the game. And uh, I, uh, I think it's gotta be looked at seriously. As far as football's impact, um, you know, it's different. They're working with like 115 or 20 teams and, they never have those kind of issues. And what is that going to do if they branch off and all this? I mean, something's got to be f fixed because some things are broken. And I'm not going to get into all my beliefs on all of that right now. But um, there's a great, great game here. And I don't want it to be damaged. And uh, I, I, I do worry about it. I'm on every committee I could be on to try to help solve that and I would love to talk to him and our commissioner I know they've been talking a lot I just don't know what the answers are my day job taking up all my time but in the off season I'd sure like to uh, really get in a room with people where there's coaches in the room and administrators instead of the way it's been where there's like one coach and 30 administrators it's been really that makes it really difficult squeeze in one last quick question Hey, Tom, uh, John Sokoloff with uh, WCBI. You talked about Mississippi State a little bit there when, you know, discussing Josh Hubbard and, and a little bit in the matchup. But based on watching the film and, and, you know, seeing the tape, what sticks out to you the most about this matchup and this team in general? You know, I, I, I don't know their coach personally. I don't know Chris, but I, I, I knew him when he was at Bowling Green, and I 
I've known some of the people he's worked for, and I think he's done a phenomenal job. Uh, that's number one. They're very, very, very well coached. They're very physical and tough. I mean, they should move them into the old Big Ten. I don't know if the new one's like it, like the old one was, you know, where we were a, a football team on hardwood back in the good old days. And that's what they are, you know, when you tar start talking 6'11", 265, 6'10", 250, uh, you know, wing guys that are 230, 235. A very physical team. Haven't shot it as well all the time, but they got one guy that can make every shot. And uh, they got some other guys that can make some too, but I, I think a uh, team that gets to the free throw line a lot. I just think that uh, somebody told me, a couple of my friends called me that I've seen them play, and they just said, you know, bring your hard hat in a lunchbox. And that's what I would say. I, I not only admire and respect, but fear a little bit. I mean, that's, that's what they are, and that's what, uh, so it should be a, a hell of a football game on, uh, on, on Thursday night, Thursday afternoon. Okay, thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.